Hi there, it's Rachel with Sasha. Sorry we got cut off, but we're going to pick up right where we left off, working on the loose leash walking. I've brought Sasha out here, and I'm going to walk her around some more areas, so hopefully she'll start uh, pulling so that we can practice uh, both methods a little bit more. I'm going to practice the back method at first, and then we'll add in the reverse method. So she's already exploring, so may as well start now. Sasha, back. reverse method with her, see how she does with that. So let's try. Sasha, this way. 180 degrees and you can see it was just a little tug. Sasha, this way. Now this is also good since there she was lagging. Sasha, this way. Or going off to the sides. Sasha, this way. Sasha, this way. Now we can walk a lot uh, farther and a lot longer without her pulling. I got a nice loose leash here. So this is what we want to see. Now, uh, here, this is a good example since she was kind of all over the place and not exactly just taking off straight in front of me, that you can use either method just to get her back to you no matter which way she's going. The reverse method is good if she's lagging because you're already going the opposite direction. So just give a little wiggle to the leash, to the leash, and have her uh, come up to you. Just say this way, or the back method works to bring her to you. So for the reverse method, she follows you. Back method, she comes to you to get the leash nice and loose. Now I've noticed with her, with the reverse method. She gets excited when you're going somewhere else and she feels like she's missing out on things. So she starts to run forward and she pulls on the leash again. So for her, um, the reverse or the back <coughs> method might be better than the reverse method if she is super excited. So it doesn't just have her running from one way to the other. The back method uh, seems to keep her a little bit more calm. So keep that in mind. And you can use both methods uh, depending on which situation or which one she responds to the best. So I'm going to keep walking her around. We're going to keep practicing and I'll see which one. down and responding better to the back method without getting too excited and wanting to run up. So like in the mornings when you walk her to meet us to pick her up, I think maybe, uh, I'm sorry, she's responding better to the reverse method. So when uh, you walk to meet us for us to pick her up, 
maybe try the back method because I know she's really excited. It's early in the morning. She hasn't had a chance to burn off any energy. And so to keep you from walking back and forth and taking forever to get to the meeting spot, um, and you don't want her running and pulling you in both directions with the reverse method, maybe try the back method to bring her to you and get her calmed down before you start walking again. And I think that will help a lot. Now the key to loose leash walking, besides uh, holding the end of the leash so she has plenty of room to walk around, is to practice this at least 20 to 30 minutes a day. You can see how Sasha got better and was pulling less and less with just a few short minutes of practice in a localized area here. So by practicing 20 to 30 minutes a day, it will make this a habit for her. Well, she will always behave on a leash and um, the more situations she's exposed to, the better she'll be. If you take her on long walks in different areas um, and mix it up some so she's constantly exposed to new things and are really strict on the loose leash walking, then she'll know exactly what is expected of her whenever she is put on a leash. That uh, just makes good leash manners for Sasha, so you can go anywhere with confidence and uh, knowing that you aren't going to be pulled around by a wannabe sled dog. Overall, Sasha did a really good job and I'm very impressed, so remember the back method of calling her back like this and the reverse method of turning off 180 degrees and walking the other direction. This was Rachel and Sasha and we are working on loose leash walking.